The committee heard witnesses and uh, stories. And through those witnesses and stories, we recognized that uh, this whole process was a life cycle. It was about a continuum of care. And the focus needed to be on patients. So we have a patient-centered approach. And by having physicians sort of leading off as the title uh, did not represent the breadth of understanding that we had. So we very quickly recognized that this is about a holistic approach, a continuum of care, and making sure that the patient, his or her needs, her, his or her desires, and his or her um, uh, end-of-life questions would be honored in our report. Well, the Supreme Court of Canada, um, over a year ago, made a decision. And they were asked to, uh, to speak on whether or not it was uh, within a person's rights to uh, seek uh, medical assistance in dying. And uh, so those cases, that case was brought, actually two cases were brought to the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court had a unanimous decision a year ago, February, a year ago this month, that um, said that the, the parts of the criminal code that uh, made it illegal uh, to have a process where you could have medical assistance in dying did not stand up to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And so the Canadian Charter, that, that foundational piece of, of legislation that makes us Canadian, uh, needed to, uh, to be in, in, in put into our discuss, discussions about this. And that's the way it, um, it came about. And so the, the Supreme Court gave us one year. Uh, we had an election in the middle of that, and so that we had to extend it. Uh, we got a four-month extension. And now we have a report, which is a discussion paper. The committee, I would say our work wasn't rushed but as people we were rushed. So what we did was we uh, started our work in the middle of January and we really had about a month, um, but we did the equivalent of about four or five months study. And this was okay because we had work done. Uh, Quebec had done six years of study before they uh, developed their system of aid medical à mourir in Quebec. Um, we had a, an external uh, panel report that the previous federal government had commissioned. We had a uh, provincial territorial uh, report that had hearings across the country. And we had the CMA, the Canadian Medical Association, had done its studies, as well as several other studies, as well as international experience from Belgium and the Netherlands and Luxembourg and Switzerland and some American states. So we had a large body of material. So we didn't have to do everything in this process. What we did do was we, uh, we met with 61 witnesses. Uh, we heard from over 120 uh, groups in terms of submissions or briefs, and we were able to um, work as many as seven meetings in a week, uh, day and night, and uh, were able to put together a report. There wasn't a day that when we were listening to testimony or a moment when we were writing the report that the needs of the vulnerable weren't foremost in our minds. Uh, when we look at the issue of age, uh, we have to balance the right of, of how do you ensure capacity from a younger person at the same time safeguard their right if they have intolerable suffering. The same with people with mental uh, disabilities, with emotional problems, that we have to balance to ensure that there are safeguards in our system uh, where they are protected from any undue influence, at the same time guaranteed the right that anybody who wasn't disabled or is not vulnerable has. This can't be a second um, a problem that they need to face in life if they have enough problems in their own. So we have safeguarded them and we are insured, uh, we're ensuring that uh, the system is in place, that, that every Canadian has equal access and every Canadian is equally protected. So I think what the steps are is, is we've presented a report in Parliament um, that's been tabled in the House of Commons and in the Senate. And I might say that it's, it was, I think, particularly brilliant um, to have the Senate and the House of Commons work together. Not only does it sort of speed up the process going on from this because the Senate has been engaged, but the, the wisdom and the, uh, the sage nature of the senators was able to be blended with the, uh, the the exuberance and the political instincts of members of parliament to come up with a report that I think was timely and uh, important and uh, rooted in Canadian values and respectful of the charter. So we take that report now, we present it to parliament, and the government then has the option. I mean, obviously the government isn't bound by a report, it's a policy piece. 
uh, is a suggestion of a federal framework. Um, and the Minister of Justice will, uh, I'm hoping, consider the report as she drafts legislation uh, to changes to the criminal code and begins negotiations with the provinces and territories for their part in this. We heard consistently that people want a federal framework. Uh, they don't want a patchwork across the country. So they're looking for federal legislation that um, harmonizes the experience and ensures that Canadians coast to coast to coast have equal access to uh, assistance in dying.